Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace to the rest of you. You know who it is, what I'm going to ask you to do, and why I'm going to ask you to do it. So I'm going to get to the messages. And I'm saying messages because in this case there are two. Uh, the first one, real quick, I just wanted to uh, um, answer a question that Taz had. When Amber Geiger was convicted and got 10 years, uh, of course some white, some, somebody white somewhere tweeted that her trial wasn't fair and the jury was blacks and Mexicans and she should be free. And Taz said, where are all these niggas talking about stepping out and leaving and stepping away? Where are all these niggas uh, who defend the white women's? I'm just going to answer the question. Most of us brothers that are done with African-American women aren't necessarily into the white women either. There are those who are, but usually they ain't even on social media now. In the Midwestern United States, I saw that a lot of them like they were. And even my wife yesterday said, she asked me, how, it, how is it that tall, fit, buff African-American men will be with a big old fat white woman? I told her, well, you know, in the Midwest, that's different. I, I admit I was shocked to see it. But for the most part, for the most part, I didn't really see a whole lot of that. But I, t I said to her, as far as why you conceive a gym brother with a big old land whale of any race, I do know what the reason for that is. And that is that in our community, we got this, we have that issue. That's a problem even in our community. In our community, the brothers that will date only sisters are still pretty much expected and raised to date the big chunky sisters. Why? But he has to be fit and in shape. That's why. He's got to be on top of his game to get a woman that's not on top of hers. If she's going to the gym, she's probably single and and pushing brothers away too. That's just how it is. She's going to the gym. She's fit. She has options. Ain't no brother good enough. So she said, my goodness, it, it sounds like a really bad situation in your people's community. I was like, oh, it is. Oh, yeah, we, yeah. And it, they're doing the same thing in your community that they've done to ours. they just further along with us. Every time they do something in our community and they test it in the works, they start targeting yours too. Because y'all black and you Muslim. So anyway, that's the answer to that. Most brothers that want to step away, as far as I know, really ain't even in the Becky like that. So this ain't something, this is no surprise, really. We, you know, we, we know them Beckys are dangerous. Most of us know Beckys are dangerous. They ain't to be trusted. African-American women, I mean, some of us, Taz, actually know that the reason why Sapphire is broken is because Miss Ann broke her. A lot of us actually do understand that. Many of us ain't really into them like that. We're more so into uh, black women that just aren't American, which you know something about. Or uh, we may be into other non-white women in certain parts of the world, but usually Becky's the last option. I mean, instinctively, we know not to trust them. We should. There are a few brothers that want only Becky, but they ain't on social media with that mess. Because they get shut. We would shut them down. Man, what you doing sitting up here promoting Becky? <laughs> we ain't got time for Becky. So that being said, um... <clears throat> Yeah, that being said, anyway, uh, I answered that. So the next thing I wanted to get at was uh, a misconception that seems to be going around Manosphere. Um, the Reverend Brother Pastor Deacon Dr. Oshie Duke Jackson um, does a very good job when he's doing his storytelling. His delivery is excellent. He put up a video uh, uh, about how most Pookies and Ray Rays really aren't select. And I do agree, because in most situations, the women are really just eliminating most of the men. And if it's in the hood, they're going to eliminate most of the guys in the hood. Now, this depends on how you want to define the Pookie and the Ray Ray. It really does. But not everybody's going to be successful in any situation. And so certainly, yeah, in the hood, a lot of these women do decide they want men to get more money than the average Pookie or Ray Ray is going to get. But somebody in the comments section said that Pokey and Ray Ray will approach women. But the guys with steady jobs and steady work won't approach women. And that's really the reason why it seems like Pookie and Ray Ray are doing better, at least where women are concerned. I would uh, like to counter that. The real reason why it appears that they're doing better is actually because of white supremacy in the minds of the African-American woman, Sapphire. 
It is the internalization of white supremacy's negative stereotypes about us. And it is not the internalization by the black man, it is the internalization by the black woman. Sapphire internalizes the negative stereotypes about black people. Sapphire believes the negative stereotypes. She believes that they, uh, that they are true and that they should be truth. So when you got a brother that's not an idness, and he's square dealing and straight laced, especially from a young age, just like what O'Shea was saying about how we judge black folk that grow up in the suburbs and we really, really judge the men who come up in the suburbs. We, we're harder on them. We, they they got to prove that they real. So what happens is that when brothers don't fit this in a stereotype, it is actually sisters who start to believe that... Um, sisters start to believe that these brothers ain't real brothers. Now, this is so prevalent that even in the nicer neighborhoods, the sisters feel the same way. So when sisters are growing up in these nice neighborhoods and their dad is providing well for them and they got certain opportunities uh, and they plan to actually capitalize on these opportunities, they're studying and they're preparing for their own futures. They still don't want the dudes that are doing that. So if you take two suburban sisters, you put them in, an, in a black upper class neighborhood, not even a mix. You put them in a black upper class neighborhood, two suburban sisters. And they friends with each other. They're not going to have crushes on each other's brothers because their brothers ain't real. It's okay for them as sisters to be ready to take advantage of. They can even brag about it. Oh, I'm studying hard. I'm going to be a neurosurgeon when I get up there. Yeah, but see, <laughs> you take these brothers that are actually learning how to open up businesses and keep them going. Or that are learning some kind of very rare and preclusive skill just like these sisters are trying to develop these brothers got they gonna have to give up some of their childhood to do it and these sisters are looking at them like that he ain't real i want a nigga that's on the football team well okay but unless this dude from the football team is naturally gifted in one of these rare and preclusive skill sets or just naturally gifted in one of the in, in the sciences or the math courses he ain't gonna be able to devote much time to football most of us ain't built that way. Some are, but very few are. That's why the scholar athlete is very rare. The scholar athlete is not that common. It exists, but it ain't that common. But these sisters ain't looking for that. I mean, they ain't looking for the guy that's the scholar. That's not it. She could be on the path to becoming a neurosurgeon. And she's not looking for a guy that's on that same path. You would think they are. My parents thought that they were. It took a while for my parents, for, it really took a while for my mother to find out from her friends in another city, the same city in which I was born, that that's not the case. I'll give you a prime example. Let's take my homeboy Brick from the same neighborhood in which I grew up. Now, Brick moved into our neighborhood as a child. He came in from the hood as a child. His dad started to do better and they moved into our neighborhood. Now, Brick grew in to be something of a hero in the neighborhood because he never let nobody bully nobody else. He wasn't tolerating that. And uh, the thing was that Brick still ran with them thug niggas from these bad neighborhoods. So everybody pretty much would forget that Brick lived in our neighborhood. Oh, they'd for, and they would forget that his brother lived in our neighborhood. They just completely forget about that. So, of course, add to, the, add to that the fact that he is 6'2". He was 6'2 at age 16. He was bench pressing 400 pounds, and he, was weigh, he weighed 200 pounds. You add all of this in, in fact, that he played football for a little while, and that he was fighting, uh, he was fighting grown men, security guards at some of these clubs, and they didn't even know he was a teenager because he was whooping that ass. You add all of this in, he was a bad dude when it came to them hands. Okay, of course, sisters love that. We're talking attractive sisters. There were attractive women that wanted to be with him, and he didn't have time for them. And that's how it was. But they forgot where this man lived at. And, of course, he was slick with them hands. And ain't nobody knocking him for it. But the point is, other than having a felony at a young age, he had all them stereotypical boxes checked. But the problem was that he did, in fact, wind up getting a felony later on. Because there was that pressure to be an idness. 
to fit the stereotypes. And eventually it started to, to come out that he just didn't have no felonies. He went to college and committed armed robbery. While he was in college, of course he got caught. Y'all know the story. Messed me up. Because he didn't have to do it. But then there was also something else going on too. There was another man lived uh, down the street. He lived about uh, four houses down from Brick actually. We gonna call him Will Smith because of the resemblance. But he had a bigger forehead than Will Smith. Now, he would throw them hands too if, you, if he had to do it. He would never start nothing. Uh, he wasn't known for throwing hands, but he could do it. I saw him do it. He was fairly good. Better than what people thought. Oh, and he'd headbutt you too with that big old forehead of his. He had a six head. And if you had one of them thin white folk noses, he'd really headbutt you because it's easy to break them type of noses. I never wanted to fight him. He never wanted to fight me. We cool. But, you know, we, he, he could throw him. And he would never start none, but he was fearless. I mean, you know, dudes big want to fight this dude. He'd be ready. He's okay, nigga, what's happening? So, uh, you know, he never ran from nobody. He just never did, but he was an honest man. The way the women treated him, I'm talking women from the hood, and I'm talking women from our neighborhood. It was the same. It made not a goddamn bit of difference. He was just... He's not the only one. What I'm saying is that this was the pattern throughout. He didn't fit the, the idness stereotype. So he didn't fit white folk negative stereotype of black men. And they might. So that was enough for sisters, even from our neighborhood, to try to curve him to the left. Okay, you, you ain't, you not real. Even though he could throw them hands. But they didn't know that. That's what it came down to. At the end of the day, it was entertainment. And dudes that are building a future for themselves can't be entertaining at the time that they're building that future for themselves. I mean, they could be entertaining in individual context. I'm, yes, but what I'm saying is that they don't entertain the masses while they're building a future for themselves. There was another guy. And, uh, well, no, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit more about Will Smith. Will Smith had a crush on a girl that lived behind him. Now, if you think the Creoles pretty much all look different, uh, that's not true. But she looked that part. I mean, brown, straight hair completely. Green eyes. Quite pale. Yeah, when she was growing up, there were white girls that thought she was white. He had a crush on her. Now, she wasn't the only one he had a crush on. He liked them different kinds of ways. But he had a crush on her. She didn't get that man a chance until she was already married to somebody else. Now, if you fast forward to today, he's practicing law successfully and he's married to a 92 octane. Uh, my man Brick was married and he's divorced and he's now uh, in a relationship with a lady that most of us, um, most of us from my neighborhood would not look twice at. My man, he's still hood. Some of that hood stuff is just baked into the cake. And it's like what O'Shea said. You know, these, a lot of these dudes that's coming out the hood ain't always messing with the most attractive women. It ain't like that. They're messing with the same few. But the point I'm getting at is that in order to start off, in order to start this way, in, in order to get your love life started off, they, but they had to go through this. Now, let's take my other man. Um, since he looked like that dude Garfield Bright out that singing group shy that was singing all them simping songs back in the 90s I'm referred to him as Garfield Bright he had them hands he came up in our neighborhood his folks wasn't rich they wasn't poor but he came up in our neighborhood he was nice with them hands he was quick ain't nobody beat this dude he taught me some boxing moves and I used them later on and they worked they helped out Brick did too as well both of them taught me a few things. I didn't tell either one that the other one was showing me a few things. So they helped out. I mean, they, they, I say about twice, they, what they taught me stopped me from getting my butt whooped. Because I was getting to that age and, you know, niggas was looking for stripes, easy stripes. And like I say, 
uh, a lot of us believe these stereotypes. And I'm going to come back to that in, uh, in a little while. So my man, Gaul Phil Bright, here he was, nice looking to women, all right? He was good with them hands, but he didn't act hood. That's all it was. He could hang out with dudes from the hood and get along with them. They couldn't beat him up anyway, but he didn't act a nigga. He didn't act hood. He didn't act out that, that idna stereotype that, um, that, that white folks would have in their mind of the black man. Did he date? He did. Guess who he dated? All the time they were unattractive. That's all. They, he didn't date nobody that was attractive. They were always somewhat unattractive. Now they wouldn't terribly, they weren't repulsive to look at for the most part, but they, no, they were never attractive. So they would be talking, girls would see him and he was that dude that girls would see and talk about, oh, he's so fine. They wouldn't say it when he wasn't around because they weren't thinking about him. But when they saw him, say, oh, oh, man, Garfield's so fine. But he never dated attractive women. What was the deal with that? It's very simple. When an African-American woman is attractive, there's something that they're looking for and it's bad. It's a negative stereotype and he wasn't it. So even if they liked him, they weren't going to go out. They weren't going to chase him down. They would chase and pursue some of these dudes like Brick. Because they forgot Brick even lived in our neighborhood. Brick, he wasn't mean. He wasn't vicious. But that Brick acted hood. Brick was getting into fights a lot because he would be defending other people. But he got a reputation for fighting and kicking behind. Garfield was a little bit different. Garfield was more mild-mannered than Brick. And both of them was good friends, so they must have been easy to get along with, very sociable dudes. But the, it was the reputation, that's all it was. And to this day, Garfield, he got, Garfield's been married one time, and he got cheated on, and she wasn't even that attractive. What was the reason? Very simple. As a black man, with all that he had to offer, it wasn't good enough because he didn't fit the negative stereotype. He wasn't idness enough. When brothers have their stuff together, they're not just not approaching black women, and that's why they wind up single and not doing as well. That's not what's going on, like what a lot of them try to say. What's happening is that when brothers are attract, uh, when brothers are, well, yeah, when brothers have their stuff together in life, and even if they are attractive to women, the fact is that they're going to be judged much more harshly because they're not negatively stereotypical. That's what it really comes down to. So if you take the dude with the gold. That everybody done told this woman done beat up a, a bunch of dudes before and he show up and he opens the door for her. She's like, oh, this is his tender side. But if you take you take my man's Garfield who can fight, but ain't nobody talking about him beating everybody up because he ain't walking around getting into fights like that. It's a few people that know how his hands are. And he ain't acting the idness. And he opens the door. He's too nice. He probably got confidence issues. What's wrong with him? He ain't. He just. There's just something he ain't got. It's that thug. That's really what it is. So if you take my man's Will Smith. And how nice he would treat women. Because he was trained to do so. It's going to be the same thing. That's what it's going to come down to. The fact is that he was curved to the left a lot of times coming up, largely because of, and some of y'all will say, well, yeah, but he's married now, and you said that she's 92 octane and she's attractive, so what's the deal? Yeah, look how long it took him. What about right then when he was young and somebody else didn't have to go through all of that waiting and, and didn't even have to build a life for themselves? That's the question. So that's what I'm getting at here. It didn't have to do with something being wrong with their approaches. It really didn't make a difference. The point is that Brick got approached. He didn't really have to learn much about how to approach him. He had to learn only how to keep them. He didn't learn have to learn how to get them. They were <laughs> the ones that didn't approach him wanted to be approached. That's what that's about. He never had to learn how to get them. Will Smith could not learn how to get him because it didn't matter what he did or what he said. That's the bottom line. That's what it was. Garfield couldn't learn how to get them per se. 
because even when they was looking at him, he would, they would be eyeballing him and lusting after him. But when it came to who they were going to approach, it was going to be someone like Brick or somebody that wasn't even as good as Brick, but somebody who actually was a bad dude. And he would chase them dudes down. And this was only in our community. When I got to high school, there were more Latin Americans I started to meet in our city. I didn't meet them in middle school, but in um, high school, I started to meet them. Some of them went from South America and Central America. And I began to notice that some of those nice guys from these areas, I'm talking, they were genuinely nice dudes. Could they fight? We don't know. They didn't get into arguments, let alone fights. What with some of the fine, some of the knock, you know, some of the, some of the, the nicely built Latina women. I saw that. Now, these weren't Mexicans. Mexicans darn near got the same problem we do. But these were other nationalities, not Mexicans. And you could see the, you could see the, the attractive one with a, a nice guy. Wasn't nothing negatively stereotypical about this dude. And I spoke Spanish, so I understood what they were talking about for the most part. If I got into the conversation early, they... It, if you can't use the language against you can't use the language to say black heart you don't know what they were talking about or what they were doing maybe the game was on point maybe it was but what was what was on point game though so i just want i wanted to clear this up it is not what people think it never was at the end of the day it always came down to this brothers who don't fit white folks negative stereotypes also are the ones that get shunned by sisters, especially attractive sisters. They're not just being shunned by the ghetto and hood rat sisters with the head wagging, the finger snapping, and multi multicolored hair and multicolored golds in their mouth. No, it ain't the only ones. No, 92 octane sisters don't want these dudes that don't fit negative stereotypes white folks have of us in their minds. See, when you are, I just explained it, that the same guy getting out and opening the door for a woman, I mean, the different dudes getting out and opening the door for a woman sends different signals to her based on what she's heard of him before and what he looks like and how he's been. Pretty much how negatively stereotypical he's been before. That's what I was getting at. And if you really want to see an example of it, I mentioned this skit before, Magoober. The SNL skit Maguba, Saturday Night Live, all the Maguba skits. Check out the one with Maguba and Daryl, played by Charles Barkley. He maces Charles Barkley because he has a lot of subconscious biases in his mind. That's what the skit was about. Brothers, it ain't just white guys that got the subconscious biases against you in their minds. Our own women have these same subconscious biases against you in their minds. And if you don't fit those subconscious biases, it is so ingrained in them that if you don't fit them, you're not even a real man, let alone a real black man. That's how bad it is. And that's really all it is that you're dealing with. Your game may be weak. But most men in the world got weak game. To be honest with you, ain't men in other communities focusing on game. So what, how does that make you different from most men in the world? You may not know... Uh, uh, you may not know how to so-called talk to women because you don't know about women in general. Most men in the world don't. And they don't even focus on that a whole lot. It'd be nice if they at least learned something. I mean, I'd like to see marriages be happy around the world. But the thing is that thing is that you ain't no worse than most men in the world are. You're just in a situation in which you were judged more harshly for not fitting your enemy's negative stereotypes of you. And you're judged harshly for not fitting it, not by even by them, but by your own woman. That's what the situation is. Nothing more. Do you need to self-improve about as much as any other man in the world does? But do not let them come along and tell you that there's something wrong with you because you can't read women's minds, especially considering that in other cultures, the women kind of just don't say much to the, their little boys about what women want. Whereas in our culture, they effing lied to you about it. Now, factor that in. If you a non-select man, it's OK if you decide to self-improve. You should be self-improving self anyway. But if you a non-selected dude in the black community, do not beat yourself up and don't let nobody else beat you up about it. Because the odds were stacked against you from jump. The odds were stacked against most black men in the community from jump. The odds were stacked against most Western men. It's just that it's a good thing when it happens to white folk. Good for us. But it's not a good thing when it happens to you.
but you were set up that way. It was set up for you to fail. It was set up for most of you to fail and for a few of you to succeed because the sister, the sapphire in the West has been programmed to become exactly like the bighorn sheep and create genetic bottlenecks. And by the way, let me tell you all where this has led to, led us as a community, and then I'm gonna sign off because I'm done. Thanks for being patient. Uh, one of my subscribers, Brother Hayes, put me up on something. I pointed out how um, the, um, the eliminating instinct uh, or the eliminating behavior of many women, whether it's instinctive or taught, that their uh, proclivity to eliminate upwards of 80% of most men and focus on the same has led to genetic bottlenecking. It's going to do this in the bighorn sheep uh, population. So what you think is going to happen in the human population? I, I mentioned how this is going to happen and how we're going to start inbreeding um, accidentally. We've already started. Well, the subscriber, Brother Hayes, told me that uh, he and someone else he knew had been told by a nurse or a doctor, some sort of healthcare professional, that the black community in the United States is already seeing a rise in the afflictions that are usually associated with inbreeding. That means that our very DNA is now, it's not going to be shaped by this. Our DNA is already being shaped by this. We're losing every genetic advantage we have. So, that's how far gone we are. And you want us, some brothers like Gab Talk Media and Taz and uh, Stupid Sly, want us to stay in this bull, want us to stay in that situation, want us to uh, try to reproduce in that situation in a, a case wherein if we actually did have our own children, they would have nobody with which to have our grandchildren except an inbred population. That's what you want us to do? No, nah, bruh. Uh-uh. If you're not going to attack these sisters for their mate selection criteria that is jacked up and different from everybody else's in the world except for Becky's, who ain't nobody anyway, if you're not willing to get on them for the control that they do have, then damn it, <laughs> you ain't no good to us. You're sitting up here blaming men for not knowing how to read women's minds. You're not sitting up here pointing at the women whose minds nobody can read and saying, why don't you speak the F up and be honest about what the hell it is you want in the first place? Don't lie about it. If you can't be made happy, if you're impossible to please, come out and say it. Say you want something that doesn't exist. That's the only way. That's the only message from you that's going to be acceptable at this point. Stop defending the guilty for their guilt. You defend the innocent, sure, but don't sit up here and defend the guilty for their guilt and then turn around and start blaming the innocent because they can't read the minds of the guilty. You blaming the victim. Anyway, I think I've explained enough. Thank you for your patience. Black Horse Sign and Blackout. Assalamu alaikum.